Isaac is James Mycon. Chiggity check. Hey. Thank you, Isaac. Jesus, we love you. Thank you. 
Until I'm totally undone And with your arms around me Fear was no match for your love Now you've won me Oh, you remind me Of things forgotten
Come on, good morning. Jesus is in this place, and God, we just want to keep entering into your presence. We want to keep gazing on you, Jesus. We're going to look, we're going to go through this time, and we're setting aside today as worship and the word. So we're focusing on and meditating on scripture as we worship Jesus. So I just want to open, if you want to open with me to Revelation 19, verse 11. And we're just going to keep meditating on the word as we lift up Jesus. And if you want, you can stand with me as we just press into who he is. Revelation 19, verse 11. Then I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He's clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. I want to say that again. The name by which he is called is the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God and we can stand assured on his word. We can find strength, we can find refuge, we can find courage on the stability of the word of God. It's who he is. And the armies of heaven were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword and which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Come on, this is our God. This is who we're worshiping today. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Word of God. Jesus, we lift you up in this place. We look to you right now. We look to the truth of God. We look to the word of God, that you're high and lifted up over everything else. And Jesus, we come in alignment with that mighty reality today, that you are in total control and you've come back to win the bride of Christ. Oh, we lift up grateful hearts and Jesus, we take this time to glorify your name as we launch into worship. I just wanna read off some of the statements of the names of God. Here's some of the statements. The Lord who sanctifies and makes holy. Come on, I'm grateful that he sanctifies me, that he makes me holy. The Lord, our peace. Oh, he gives us peace. Are you in turmoil? Are you in stress? Let's come to the Lord of peace, the Lord our righteousness. He himself is our righteousness. The Lord our shepherd, Jesus, we thank you that you lead us perfectly. The Lord most high, the God who sees us, everlasting God and mighty God. We lift you up, King of glory. We lift you up. We thank you that you are all around us. You're surrounding us with your might. You're surrounding us with your love, with your purity and your righteousness, God. And we're here to encounter you. We're here to bless your name. Come on, let's lift him up in this place. Jesus, Jesus.
on. Let's keep pressing in on this. Let's keep lifting him up over anything going on.
Jesus, we stand here in your presence in reverence and awe and absolute wonder. We're in awe of you, King Jesus. We're in awe of you, Jesus. The Bible calls Jesus the Lord of hosts, the Lord of heaven's armies the King of kings and Lord of lords. You're great and mighty God. You are great and mighty God. Great and mighty God. And as we keep dwelling on the word of God this morning, we're gonna dwell on scriptures on the cross of Christ, the cross of Jesus. And it's just so moving that this Lord of hosts, this Lord of heaven's armies, that in a single breath, he created all of heaven and earth, that he humbled himself to be obedient to death on a cross. It says in Philippians two, it says being in very nature God, He did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus, this is our God, full of might and power and wonder, and that you chose for love to become obedient to death on a cross to save us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice that moved all of heaven and earth. Thank you for shifting all of history in that act of courage and love. That you didn't consider it to your own advantage. That you are God but you served us and you became a ransom for us, Jesus. Oh God, we could sing for all our days of how beautiful you are, how wonderful your love is. And it says in verse nine, Philippians two, verse nine, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, come on, that at the name of this Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Isn't this a wonderful truth? Isn't this a beautiful reality? That our mighty God saved us on that cross. That he made a way, that he tore the veil. Oh God, we declare it over ourselves today that you are Jesus Christ. You are the Savior King. You are the Savior King. That you didn't just stay at a distance from us. You chose God to become flesh, to put on flesh and pay our ransom. And God, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for the power of your blood. Thank you for the reality of the cross. Come on, can we lift up a thank you from our hearts today to this Savior King? You are the Savior King. Jesus, lift him up. We thank you for the cross, King Jesus. Come on. Savior, 
Savior King, Savior King, Savior King. You are the Savior King. You are the great King of glory. And we glorify your name. We remind ourselves of all that you did at the cross and the resurrection. We remind ourselves of the power of the cross that has set us free from the chains of death. We remind ourselves of the power of your blood that we will never be the same. You are our savior, God, and we thank you. Come on. Everything changed It's getting harder to recognize The person I was Before I encountered Christ I don't walk like I used to I don't talk like I used to I was washed from the inside I was washed from the inside Oh, everything changed it's getting harder to recognize the person I was before I encountered Christ. I don't walk like I used to. I don't talk like I used to. I was washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside out. Hallelujah. been the blood hallelujah hallelujah i know it was the blood could have only been the blood jesus your blood gave me access your blood gave me access to you
but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood out I want to read this scripture and let's keep declaring this what can wash away my sins this scripture in Colossians 1 it says the Son is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation for in him all things were created things in heaven and earth visible and invisible all things have been created through him and for him and then down into verse 18 and he is the head of the body the church He's the beginning and the firstborn from, from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus, and through him to reconcile us to himself. All things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus it is your blood that has made peace between us and God it is by your blood that we are a totally new creation and we declare that reality over us today verse 21 once you were alienated from God and you were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior but now he has reconciled you come on is that good news or what? But now he has reconciled you. Come on. By Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. This is good news. We didn't earn it. And we're not struggling today with accusation because it says by the death in his body he set us free from the lies of hell come on is anyone grateful for that today is anyone thankful for that reality jesus we thank you for the power of your blood we 
could have only been a play Not my performance, not my righteousness Not my good deeds, not even obedience Could have only been a play Could have only been the blood 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 It was only by your blood It was only by your blood It was only by your blood It was only by the blood. 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 Come on, as we're singing this out, I feel the sweet invitation of the Lord. It says in Romans 6, I'll read it out in just a minute, but it talks about being unified in his death. And it's such a counterintuitive thing that as we deny ourselves, we're united with Christ and we have real freedom. I want to read this out in Romans 6. It says, Romans 6, verse 3, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? When we were baptized into his death, we were placed into the tomb with him. As Christ was brought back from death to life by the glorious power of the Father, so we too. Come on. It's a beautiful phrase right there. So we too should live a new kind of life. Verse 5. If we've become united with him in a death like his, certainly we will also be united with him when we come back to life as he did. We know that the person we used to be was crucified with him to put an end to sin in our bodies. Because of this, we are no longer slaves to sin. Come on, it's good news. It's the word of God because of this, because we were with him in his death and resurrection, united with him, raised again to life. The truth of the word of God is I am no longer a slave to sin. The person who has died has been freed from sin. And it says in 2 Corinthians, the old has gone and the new life has come. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for the power of the cross. And Jesus, that you invite us to come and die with you. But in that death, Jesus, you have brought resurrection life. So God, we declare over each one of us today, resurrection life, resurrection power. God, that we have authority over sin, Jesus. We have authority over any of the lies of the enemy because of the power of your blood, King Jesus. Oh, let's just take a moment and just dwell on the power of the cross, the power of his resurrection. Jesus, we remind ourselves of your goodness, of your love. It says in the word, this is how God demonstrates his love for us, that he sent his son to die for us. We look at the cross, Jesus, as a reminder of the power of your love. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just in our own words, just lift up thanksgiving to him. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the cross. Come on, lift it up, Jesus. We remind ourselves. God, we declare over ourselves, we are a new creation because of your death and resurrection that we have died with you, that there's an invitation in that place to let go of our old life. Come on, I believe there's a decision for some of us today to say, God, I let go of the old things. I let go of the old patterns, the old ways of thinking. The old creation is gone and the new has come because of
of his death and resurrection. Jesus, we receive it right now. And we let go of the old things, Jesus. Come on, let's lift him up.
Come on, let's declare this out.
empty the grave. You're the only God strong enough to save. You're the only God who has all power. You're the only God who could empty the grave. You're the only God strong enough to save. You're the only God who has all power. Come on, this is a powerful statement. If you think about what we're singing out, you're the only God who can empty the grave. That is a powerful statement. And I just feel this fire on declaring this over our generation, that God's the only God who can bring solution to suicide, to depression, to pornography, to addiction. He is the only God who has power. He's the only God who can empty the grave. And I just feel this as we declare this out, and it's Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of this good news. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Everything we've been praying out and singing out today is good news. That he died for us, that he broke the power of sin. And it says, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. And I believe as we sing this out and as we declare it out, that God is imparting a boldness on the proclamation of the gospel. A boldness, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, Paul says we're compelled because we're convinced that one died for all. There's something that happens in the transaction of faith of Jesus. There's power in the cross. There's a convincing that happens that compels us in his love to tell the world. So Jesus, in this place right now, we declare you are the only God who can empty the grave. And we say, would you impart a fresh boldness to each of our hearts and minds, Jesus? We declare, God, we will let the world know of this good news that you are the only God with power to save Jesus. Oh, God, so we lift this up, God. And God, we ask that you would rain down even a fresh anointing to preach this good news that we're declaring this morning. Come on, let's lift it up, Jesus. Yes, God.
God, we just pray right now in agreement. We say, let the revelation of the truth of the God rip across the nations, rip across the globe. Even this year, 2023, God, we ask that the revelation of who you are, King Jesus, would pour forth across the nations. And God, we believe it by faith. We see signs happening right now that the church is walking into a fresh season of movement and awakening and the power of the gospel. So God, we lift you up, King Jesus. We declare who you are today. We declare your goodness and the power of the cross and resurrection. And God, we come in agreement Matthew 24, that this gospel will be preached to all nations. We come in agreement with that God, that the good news of Jesus Christ will be preached to every nation. Oh, we lift you up, King of glory. We love you, Jesus. We bless your name. Can we give one more shout to Jesus this morning? We love you, God. We love you, God. Come on, amen, amen. Well, we love you guys. Have a beautiful day, and we'll see you for the next Greenhouse Set on Thursday. God bless you.